Welcome, my friends. It is Tuesday, the 29th day of November 2011, and you are watching another transmission of InfoWars Nightly News brought to you by PrisonPlanet.tv and InfoWarsNews.com. Now, we have Andrew Griffin joining us coming up in the interview segment tonight. The federal government is now not just labeling returning veterans as the number one potential terrorist or gun owners as terrorists, but now people that investigate government-sponsored terror, namely Oklahoma City investigators. So we'll talk to the reporter coming up in the second half of tonight's transmission. We also um, sent our crew to the Get Motivated uh, conference uh, yesterday that Colin Powell and General McChrystal and others were attending. It's very cheap to get in. It's basically from our research, just an establishment brainwashing forum. And somebody tagged, and we sent our reporters out there, it looks like poster board, they stuck it up on there. Somebody tagged the um, one of the billboards here in Austin, but this is a, a brainwashing event that goes on all over the country. Our reporters were out there. We'll also show you the uh, tagged tagged with truth uh, billboard that uh, well, somebody out there is upset about Colin Powell lying about WMDs knowingly and Giuliani covering up what happened on 9-11 and McChrystal covering up the murder of Pat Tillman and getting caught. That's why the billboard says uh, McChrystal 40-40. We were questioning, why does it say 40? And we thought, look up Pat Tillman. That's Pat Tillman's number. He is 40. And there's been some new information come, on, uh, come out on that as well. But first, let's get into the continued saga of the new uh, military uh, funding uh, for 2012, the NDAA, uh, the National Defense Authorization Act. And when this first came out last week, Ron Paul talked about it, Rand Paul talked about it, the ACLU did their analysis, and it said citizens can be arrested anywhere in the U.S. They've already said citizens can be killed. I mean, you saw Anwar al as they set that precedent, without a trial, without a warrant. Um, they don't want the intelligence, though, of course, because they know it's all staged. And the first thing we saw happen was propaganda on mainstream media and on by bloggers saying, hey, it says citizens are exempt. But then another section that we pointed out says, unless the government says so. Oh, citizens are exempt unless we say, fingers crossed. So it's all there. Uh, and we've got a compilation of the McCain of Hanoi Hilton fame who turned on his buddies and sold him out. That's the truth. He's not a hero. He's a coward. Uh, versus Rand Paul, the constitutional stalwart. But then we have another clip that I didn't even know existed. I, I was on RT today just a few hours ago, and I was coming on to talk about this. And she said, oh, well, here's a clip, Alex. Uh, and she played a clip uh, the reporter did of Graham. I'd read the quotes of Graham in the Washington Post saying, yes, this is for citizens. It's good. We can lock you up in a dungeon, execute you, torture you, never seen again. That's, that's freedom. I mean, this is actually happening, folks. We told you it was coming. They want to get rid of posse commentatus and then some. So we'll go ahead and play this first exchange, and then we'll get to the RT clip uh, with the actual sponsor uh, of the bill, uh, Lindsay. Hi, I'm blackmailed Graham. Here it is. And the father of the Constitution warned, the means of defense against foreign danger historically have become instruments of tyranny at home. Abraham Lincoln had similar thoughts saying, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. My well-intentioned colleagues admonitions in defending provisions of this defense bill. Yes. Their legislation would arm the military with the authority to detain indefinitely, without due process or trial, people suspected of an association with terrorism. These would include American citizens apprehended on American soil. I want to repeat that. We are talking about people who are merely suspected of terrorism, or suspected of committing a crime and have been judged by no court, we are talking about American citizens that could be taken from the United States and sent to a camp at Guantanamo Bay and held indefinite attention. A suspect, we're not talking about someone 
who has been tried and found guilty. We're talking about someone suspected of activities. But some of the things that make you suspicious of terrorism are having food, having more than seven days of food, missing fingers on your hand, having ammunition, having weatherproofed ammunition, having several guns at your house. Is that enough? Are you willing to sacrifice your freedom for liberty? I would argue that we should strike these detainee provisions from this bill because we are giving up our liberty. We are giving up our the constitutional right to have due process before we're sent to a prison. This is very... By the way, uh, he's talking about public FBI manuals that have come out in, in one case that he mentioned Arkansas a few years ago that we actually published and broke, where barber shops, tattoo parlors, gun shops, hardware stores, they said in rural Arkansas, and it turned out it was all over the country, but the, 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 the first FBI alert memo pamphlet we got was out of Arkansas, was if people had burns on their hands or missing fingers. Now, I know a lot of you out there might not have grown up around a farm or known any farmers, but I'd say about 20% of farmers are missing fingers, folks. And they got burns all over their hands. I mean, these people work all day outside. Uh, auto mechanics, I mean, I mean, what do you think's going on here? People that work in factories. Uh, wearing blue jeans, sunglasses, cell phones, having a camera. You always hear about people getting arrested. It's almost always architecture students taking photos of bridges. Uh, I was at the Golden Gate a few years ago taking video, and I saw cops looking at me, and I, I just bugged my eyes out at them. It's all about us being the terrorists. And remember the Homeland Security documents. It's all about returning vets, gun owners, libertarians. Nothing to do with al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda's been given control, of course, of Libya, now they're globalist, our government, the criminals are sending them into Syria. But we're supposed to just ignore that. Now we're going to go to McCain here, where he salivates over, this is designed to protect our service people. You must be against them. It's always about the troops. Well, funny, the majority of donations for the military in the last presidential campaign and this one, from both parties combined, Ron Paul gets more than all of the presidential candidates, both parties combined. Ron Paul. So again, stop trying to always use the military to make yourself look like a big hero. You're talking about turning the military loose on the American people like Caesar did, like Hitler did. You are the anti-gun, anti-America traitor. You've always been. You're part of the Keating Five, McCain. You're an untouchable crook. Let's go ahead and go to that clip. Here is the sniveling slime ball. Under the provisions, would it be possible that an American citizen then could be declared an enemy combatant and sent to Guantanamo Bay and detained indefinitely? I think that as long as that uh, individual, uh, no matter who they are, if they pose a threat to the security of the United States of America, should not be allowed to continue that threat. And I think that's the majority of American public opinion, especially in light of the facts that I continue to repeat to the senator from Kentucky, 27% of detainees who were released got back in the fight and were responsible for the deaths of Americans. We need to take every step necessary to prevent that from happening. That's for the safety and security of the men and women who are out there putting their lives on the line in our armed services. Uh, Mr. President, I su suggest the absence of a quorum. All right. Or, or yield the floor. I mean, this is just completely made up. Guantanamo Bay is a base where they grab innocent people generally, train them to be double agents, and then go start wars around the world. Al-Qaeda was created by the big banks that control our government through the CIA on record in 1979. But he plays on people's ignorance. Now, remember, just last week and over the weekend, there was the big contrived controversy that this didn't affect U.S. citizens. That's a classic military tactic to just deny an assault's happening. Conspiracy theory doesn't affect you. Because as one congressman uh, wrote, we covered this last night, I'm going to cover it again here, I'm going to cover it over and over again. Speaking to the Grand Rapids Press, Congressman uh, Justin Amash uh, said that uh, citizens are secretly arrested and held indefinitely under this, and that the bill is carefully crafted to, to mislead the public that that is not the case. Note that it does not preclude U.S. citizens from being directly and detained indefinitely without charge or trial. It simply makes such detention discretionary. And folks, remember how, cold, how, how, how criminal these people are. Within minutes of our article going up, they had operatives hitting the site with military and government IP addresses. Within minutes, 
with the lying, deceptive section of the bill putting it in there. They were ready. They want this. They want to be in the streets of America. They want to take your pension funds. They want to crack down. They want to arrest political dissidents. They want a red terror in America. These are criminals. These are terrorists. These are enemies. And I'm, those aren't just words. We're in danger. Do you understand what happened in Nazi Germany and other tyrannical countries is now about to happen here? They've built this whole system. They've already stolen all the bank accounts and pension funds. They just haven't let you know that yet. They've already sold the derivatives to, the, to, to infinity. It's impossible to pay it back. We don't owe it. They're announcing global dictatorship of the banks. They're going to try to implement this through the media. Notice they're pushing euthanasia now, secret arrest, torture, death. They're just overthrowing everything. Tomorrow we're going to cover, because it just broke, in the new border legislation, it allows total GMO, harmonization of all the laws of Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. I mean, it's all happening right now. The globalists have hit jump warp. I mean, they have just warped. All right, let's, let's go ahead and go to this uh, RT clip, because this is a clip I wasn't aware of that I mentioned, of Lindsey Graham. I saw his quote saying, yeah, it's for Americans, so what? The whole world's a battlefield, battlefield Earth. And he... They go on to say, we're going to use Northcom. They've already been doing it. They're already federalizing your police. They've already got CIA in your local towns. They ship the drugs into your town. These people are so criminal. They're not Americans. They are a criminal takeover army. This is espionage. This is sabotage. This is infiltration. Let's go ahead and go to the next clip. So why don't I play something for you from one of the bill's backers, Senator Lindsey Graham from South Carolina. This is what he said on the Senate floor a few weeks ago. 1032, the military custody provision, which has waivers and a lot of flexibility, doesn't apply to American citizens. 1031, the statement of authority to detain, does apply to American citizens, and it designates the world as the battlefield, including the homeland. The battlefield, says Senator okay. Graham, is right here in your front yard. In your front yard. I mean, <laughs> And you notice, in a military tactic, they say, it isn't in there, Alex Jones, Ron Paul are liars last week, while they're trying to pass the bill. It doesn't exist, they're conspiracy theorists, they're liars, the news said it. It's not true, they would never do that. And as the public learned and found out about the other subsection, they went, okay, it's there, big deal. And Graham was already doing it before that. Because again, the psychological warfare tactic is very simple. They'd rather have a debate about whether it's true or not about, rather than have a debate of, do we want this? It doesn't matter if, he, if, 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 if McCain, by the way, says a majority of Americans like this. A majority of Americans don't know their head from a hole in the ground. They don't know the, their fingers from their toes. I mean, literally. They know how to act trendy, and that's about it. But just because a bunch of slobbering fluoride heads uh, just just begging to be abused by corruption, don't know what's going on, doesn't mean I have to bend over. You see, in a republic, the minority's rights are guaranteed as well as the majority. And just because you get 51% of people saying, let's arrest this group or arrest that group, just because you get a bunch of idiots on board saying, take my rights, rip me off, it doesn't mean that the government can do it. See, de pure democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner. We're a republic. Big difference. But they are bold. I mean, they are bold. Um, moving along now, here is, uh, we've got a guest coming up later uh, dealing with this. Fusion Center documents label OKC bombing investigators as terrorists. We've got a guest coming on about that. And uh, again, um, antiwar.com, milk toast libertarian website. You're terrorist. Everybody's terrorist. It's in the domestic terrorism uh, section. Uh, it just shows how incredibly dangerous these people are that run our government. They are criminal hijackers, so of course they want to start restricting political speech because they know we're exposing them. I mean, 60 Minutes came out and said, yeah, most of the Congress is insider trading and, and, and giving companies they invest in special contracts. It's totally illegal. And the Congress came out and said, we, we're allowed to do that. You're not. Uh, and, and again, I know I keep going back to that over and over and over and over again. But th 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 these are lawless crooks. We're in a lot of trouble. And only admitting that and getting back to the Constitution is going to save us. And, and we're going to have to deal with these criminals first. 
I mean, Lindsey Graham, uh, McCain salivating about the idea of using the military on the American people. And they've already been doing it in a hundred different ways, but now they want to grab your butt and throw you in the clink forever. So they can then just go about their business stealing everything. And thank God we've got more than one Paul. Thank God we got you out there as well. So just amazing. More on that report coming up. Uh, continuing, hundreds of thousands of people have photoshopped different images of the police officer, the college cop, who has made over $110,000 a year. <laughs> out, in, out in California, they got city managers of small towns making 850000 a year. No wonder we're all going bankrupt. Uh, but he just walked by, peaceful people sitting there, just sprayed them. And the news said, ah, they deserve even more. You know, you don't do that in America. You don't sit quietly on a sidewalk. Uh, I mean, hell, they've been breaking anti-abortion activist arms for many years. And we cover that in my full martial law. Uh, but it turns out that uh, he lost his house due to the housing market crash and a bunch of other stuff. So, so this whole Ponzi scheme has, has hurt him, but doesn't matter. He still got the enjoyment of just nonchalantly spraying some college students in the face with pepper spray. Again, we stopped caring about freedom, and it left the building. Elvis has left the building. Freedom has left the building, along with all the prosperity. People are like, I don't want freedom. Just give me prosperity. The two are linked. Freedom produces the prosperity. <laughs> very, very simple. Continuing. Oh, they took his wedding ring <clears throat> in that cube. But it doesn't matter, he still gets to, I always said, even though they're going to destroy all these cops' future and their families, they're not going to care a lot of them. They still get to stomp some heads. But don't worry, uh, the uh, FAA is saying drones could patrol in the U.S. They've been allowing their test flights for a while, and now they're coming out with drones that fire tasers. And that's a great graphic. It's got tasers with little uh, wires on it. Some of them have those. But they've got other drones now that fire these shotgun rounds that taser you, and, and, and because there were so many deaths from different electric devices, now they're upping the power even more, because, you know, killing people's freedom. And now they're going to have weaponized drones over America, because after all, the Pentagon works for the big mega banks, and they're here to occupy the U.S. You don't just think our military's been used to rob and rape and loot the entire planet, and they're not going to get the big prize America. I mean, you know, they, 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 they've got special cadres in the military. A lot of the military is awake and informed. They've, they've done special psychological testing, and they've got special cadres. And, of course, the earlier groups that were psychopathic or sociopathic and wanted to crack American skulls and hate freedom, they went and put them in the police departments, and they've almost got their, their legion of evil ready, their brown shirts. And ah, the big gutting of America, you think America's in trouble now. That's just the pig being conked in the head and hauled up by its feet, but it's still alive. Now they got the big knife, and they're walking over to the pig, and they're going, piggy, piggy. And they're just now starting to slide that knife right into the throat. And the pig's kicking and everything. And the government's saying, I'm patriotic. And blood spray it out. They're going, don't criticize. Oh, it's classical tyranny. Sure it is, but it's America. The pig's like, man, man. They're, and the yuppies are dancing around going, we're next, we're next. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. That man on the street coming up here, though, because we're going to get motivated by a bunch of liars. So we've got those reports. Uh, the feds are now more and more just seizing domains of sites that have forums with links to different downloads and things. Some legal, some not. Doesn't matter. Uh, your First Amendment's out the window. <clears throat> and they're announcing uh, that uh, they uh, more and more are going to just shut everything down, even if a corporation claims your copyright uh, infringing on them. By the way, I have a good photo over here. It's uh, the cops spraying the... Uh, Constitution. Well, look, there are guys sitting there talking about freedom like the protesters. you got to spray them. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. Well, there he is spraying Yoda over there. Look, look at that one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's no end to it. <laughs> May the excessive force be with you. Hey, whatever. He, he, he likes it. Uh, continuing <clears throat> with that report. Um, Globalists had purchased millions of toxic HPV vaccines for girls in the third world. They've been linked to reduce fertility, cancer, uh, thing, autoimmune disorders. <clears throat> but that's okay. Uh, now the UN uh, takes your, your tax money and things that they get 
and uh, they're going to run around and inject people worldwide, including every girl in Mexico. And some people argue, well, there are too many people. You know, they're breeding fast all over the world. Folks, they're doing it to everybody. Okay, this is being done black, white, old, young, Americans, Mexicans, everybody. Okay, you industrialize and give people wealth. They stop even having enough kids to replace themselves. We've gone over the studies here. Instead, they keep people in poverty. They have five, six kids, and now you're going to give them shots that just screw them up and give them cancer and autoimmune diseases and kill some people. And it's, it's, the, the globalists just love abusing people. It's so sick and it's so evil. And I've told all of the different groups out there, we need victories against Gardasil and Merck. And we need all these groups that are globalist funded. We need the members to wake up to that and get angry and demand something be done. Why do you think the Fortune 500 funds La Raza and all these groups who give them all these political issues? It's so that they can control them and give you some Mexican flag waving business. Because the globalists don't care about that. They want to get rid of all three other countries. We need to force groups like La Raza, because there's not going to be any race if you don't stop this. Okay, they're going to sterilize and give a whole bunch of people cancer. So you need to get, and I mean, what groups do we get in America to save girls, period? I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, where are these civil rights groups out there defending what's happening? That's my point. That's my point. I don't want to digress into it, but, but like we're all obsessed with discrimination and all taught to not trust each other and only trust the government. But then meanwhile, mega banks get trillions of our tax dollars that we've all got to pay back, and they get that as bailout money. We never talk about that discrimination. See, see the globalists are masters at framing things, so you only look at it from one perspective. Medical mafia using financial leverage to enforce children's vaccinations on poor families. In Australia, the U.S., you name it, they say, hey, you want welfare? You got to, and they destroyed the economy, so some people have to go on it, or dad dies in a car wreck or whatever. You got to take the shots. It's not the law. They just do it through color of law and fraud, and they give people experimental vaccines as well. If a parent refuses to uh, consent to their child's vaccination to the full schedule, the family would have $2,000 plus taken out of their yearly welfare. I mean, there's an example right there. And if you expand to this, California signed the bill three months ago or two months ago saying they're going to give kids shots there without parental consent. I mean, the government wants to secretly arrest citizens and, and kill you or torture you. Uh, no judge, no jury, no trial. No one knows where you even went. Just the disappearances. And the government in California says, we're going to shoot your kids up without asking you. Uh, I mean, this is, this is creep fest, folks. And it's going to get a lot worse. Continuing, see, everybody thinks, though, it isn't going to happen to them. It's going to happen to you. Everybody's going to be touched by this if you haven't already been. Shifting now into geopolitical uh, issues, we're almost to the man on the street report. Russia threatens to blockade NATO routes, uh, both by land and by sea. Medvedev envisioned possible missile attacks on Poland, Romania, Spain, and Turkey as a means to disable the counter-missile batteries. The United States fails to acknowledge the concerns of the Russian defense officials. <clears throat> Russia's not perfect, but it's not the globalist tyranny. They actually pay people to get married and have kids there because the Russian population's dying off. Just like the West is declining from Japan to the United States. It's the death of the West, as Pat Buchanan wrote. And so I, you know, I judge by that. You know, at least this slave system wants some more slaves. The globalists just want to get rid of everybody because they've already got it all figured out, they think. And uh, Russia is more and more saying, we're not putting up with this because they know they're being encircled. They've got a fleet there off the coast of Syria. It's getting serious. Now, continuing an Infowars.com article, but it links to the London Telegraph and others. Uh, and this is a Kurt Nemo report. Libya redux, France and Al-Qaeda assists free Syria army in Turkey, and they just publicly admit they're just pumping Al-Qaeda into these countries right now. They've, they've given them Libya, now they're pumping them into Syria. But meanwhile, our government says, give all your rights up or Al-Qaeda will attack you. I mean, it's an oxymoron. It's a, it's a contradiction. Some people are like, well, how is it? Al-Qaeda is our friend, but we give our rights up because Al-Qaeda. Continuing, France overturns ban on GM crops. By the way, the same thing's about to happen with these new regulations with Canada and Mexico on the border. 
They're about to totally overturn it and force Mexico to take it. And of course, the U.S. is already just absolutely GMO'd out, cancer rates the highest, all sorts of new neurological problems, organ failure the highest, honeybees dying at the fastest rate. I mean, it's on. It is party time. Party time. And so uh, Monday's ruling cited a failure to establish not only the urgency of suspending genetically modified corn, but also the existence of health risk to humans, even though there's thousands of studies. So who cares what the governments and courts have said? They say in this article, an administrative body. See, because they're under an administrative EU system. doesn't matter what your country says. We are the New World Order administrative. You're going to eat what we say. You're going to take the shots we say. and You're going to die like we say. You're going to have the army arrest you if you don't like it. Okay, uh, before we get to go to this man on the street piece, oh, it's yellow cake. He got caught lying about that and anthrax. That's a little war criminal right there. He actually came out, and we have some of these quotes, demonized the Tea Party and said they're a problem. Oh, free speech is, is bad. Uh, and he also came out uh, and said that the media needs to get with the program and basically lie. Colin Powell, the tone is not, it's not good right now. In our political system here in Washington, particularly up on the Hill, Congress has become very, very tense in the two sides. Yeah, because crooks have bought both parties and people don't like it. Republicans and Democrats are focusing more and more on their extreme left and right. And we have to come back towards the center in order to be, to compromise and be conned by him. And then we also have the clip, don't we, where he uh, is uh, saying the media needs to help lie and everything. Okay, let's go ahead and play uh, him telling the media, hey, get with the program. They haven't gotten with the program. I mean, they're losing all their viewers, lying for you. Get with the program. Learn to BS the public. Come on, get with the program. They're not loving the criminals anymore. Well, because you're dropping the hammer, crook. I mean, look at that psycho face. It was like some kind of demonic space creature like Newt Gingrich. Let's go ahead and go to the next thing. And let me say this directly. The media has to help us. The media loves this game where everybody is on the extreme. It makes for great television. It makes for great chatter. It makes for great talk shows all day long with commentators commenting on commentators about the latest little mini flap up on Capitol Hill. So what we have to do is sort of take some of the heat out of our political life in terms of the coverage of it so these folks can get to work quietly. I get your point about that. Oh, get to work quietly running terror attacks on Iran, now admitted, blowing up whole bases, but Iran sits there and takes it, and they're like, good, that's evil that you took it. People are like, I can't believe those Iranians are letting us blow up their cities. They're so, they're so evil. They, they, our terror attack on them is, is horrible that they did that. I mean, it, 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 you see the craziness of it? Let's go ahead and go to the next clip of him lying in front of the UN about the anthrax. And of course, they knew at the time these were trucks the British had sold them for pumping up hot air balloons, well, in this case, hydrogen balloons, uh, with cameras on them to direct artillery when the US was arming and the Brits were arming Saddam against the Iranians. But the uh, public doesn't know what the Iran-Iraq war, much less where Iran and Iraq is. I saw some Australian news piece where half the Americans they talked to, they said, Al-Qaeda is right here, should we bomb them? They, and, they, and they had a map of the world, and it was Australia. They're like, yes, blow them off the map. They're like, yes, yes, get them. The public's like, yes, yes, it's pro-America, kill. They're like, how about right here? And it was like Russia, yes, get Al-Qaeda. How about here, yes. I mean, you could tell them, you could show them the moon, a photo of the moon. Al-Qaeda's there. And they'd be like, arr, arr, arr. and they're like, but Al-Qaeda's been given Libya by the government. Well, that's good. I like that, Al-Qaeda. Again, good little mentally ill runts begging to be slaves. I know I just keep going and going here, but how do you... Let's go ahead and go to the man on the street, uh, and then I'll come back and make some brief comments as we go to break uh, with this amazing piece that uh, John Bowne and Darren McBreen put together at the... Uh, get motivated by the slime ball, um, Mr. Mr. War Criminal. We're going to play that clip first, and then uh, the Giuliani, and then the, uh, the McChrystal, and the rest of them. Here it is. But how much longer are we willing to put up with Iraq's noncompliance before we, as a council, we as the United Nations, say, enough, enough? The gravity of this moment is matched by the gravity of the threat that Iraq's weapons of mass destruction pose to the world. One of the most... Hit pause, back it up. I, I want to show these guys on screen. 
You can see the CIA director behind him who would instantly get cast as the godfather in any movie. If we can put that video back up, I want to show people the guys. You know, just the image. Yeah, yeah, there it is. I mean, Powell looks like some kind of vampire who hadn't got enough blood. Uh, uh, you got the CIA director over his shoulder who literally looks like something out of uh, The Sopranos. And then you got this other guy looks like some kind of like, like, like serial killer slash android. I mean, these are psychopath liars, and they, can't, they don't even care, because you act like a bunch of sheep and think being an American means kissing their rear end. They can get away with bloody murder. Okay, finish, finish the rest of the clip, then we'll come back and go to the uh, man on the street. Here it is. One of the most worrisome things that emerges from the thick intelligence file we have on Iraq's biological weapons is the existence of mobile production facilities used to make biological agents. Let me take you inside uh, that intelligence uh, file and share with you what we know from eyewitness accounts. Oh. We have first-hand descriptions of biological weapons factories on wheels and on rails. And it turned out they knew it was all pure bull. I mean, it was at James Weapons Quarterly. They knew what the trucks were. The Brits had sold them. And he got up there and lied. And this is the get motivated. See, America is a land led by con artists and psychos and criminals. And they wear a suit, they smile at you, so, hey, great, you know, let them do whatever they want. Well, people stood up against them. And while I don't condone tagging property, even though the Founding Fathers, for 15 years before the Revolutionary War, had the Committees of Correspondence and Sons of Liberty, they tagged British propaganda posters everywhere. But they were bad. I mean, we've been taught by FEMA they're bad. Uh, what would happen if nationwide globalist propaganda got tagged like this? I mean, they're trying to shut down the web. They're saying they want to arrest Americans and imprison you for life with no proof, no reason. I don't know. The French resistance fought physically against that kind of stuff. All I'm saying is maybe it is good that people are doing things like this if they individually make the decision. I know this. I'm going to launch a contest, not of tagging globalist propaganda, but of people taking photos of stuff they've already run into. I was on a hike on the Greenbelt this morning and saw not one, not two, but three different InfoWars and Prison Planet tags that I didn't do. Hadn't been down that area in about a year. Uh, I told people who go in bathrooms everywhere, they see it everywhere. Instead of people writing cuss words, they're writing InfoWars.com. They're putting it on the Federal Reserve instrument of debt, uh, the Federal Reserve note. People call it the dollar. So if you don't know uh, what this stuff means on there, um, I'm not sure exactly what whoever did this, some of it means, and, uh, and I, the guys have been out there. It looks like poster board is stuck up there. It's been up there like a week now. Yellow cake he lied about, anthrax he lied about. Uh, so, you know, that's the Colin Powell thing, and, and he is a war criminal. Uh, Bill Cosby says, if you don't like Obama, you're racist. Really, I just didn't like puppets that read off teleprompters. I mean, am I a racist against white people because I don't like sniveling, cross-dressing Giuliani? Giuliani helped carry a, a, a cover up 9-11. He knew about the drill that FEMA ran of it being attacked, got caught lying about it. He's definitely in on it. Pat Tillman's number is 40, and Pat Tillman was murdered, of course, to cover up the fact that opium was being grown. He's going to blow the whistle on that. And, and, and McChrystal gave him the silver star, made up the lie about him fighting al-Qaeda and dying. <laughs> Our troops don't fight the CIA's command force al-Qaeda. Okay. <laughs> he, he was killed, he was murdered, and that's now come out, and he gave him the silver star. So I, I'm, we're guessing that's what this iconography uh, means. And uh, it's a powerful idea. It's a big idea. So we're going to have a contest, a photo contest, or video contest. It can be both. Of people videotaping or photographing globalist propaganda being defaced. It's kind of like pulling down Saddam's uh, statue. But, but again, I don't think you should do it on private property. Uh, and, and I'm just saying you can photograph what other people have done because then it has a life of its own on the web and other people get the idea and, well, it can spread. All right, we're going to go ahead and go to this man on the street piece. Then we'll go to break, come back with our guest. It's InfoWars Nightly News right here at PrisonPlanet.tv. Political taggers have struck Austin, Texas. The billboard behind me is an advertisement for a motivational seminar featuring war criminals to be held today at the Austin Convention Center. The graffiti on this sign presents strong political points that are generally unknown to the public because the establishment media has hidden the truth or at best has minimized it. Now we're going to get some people's reaction to the billboard and then we're heading to the convention center to get motivated. Well, it's a pretty brave person got up there. I think it's, uh, I think it's opening their minds, and uh, I think it's a good thing that people are awakening to what's really going on in America. 
I believe the yellow cake refers to the uranium, radioactive material that Saddam Hussein exactly. was doing. Uh, supposedly tried to purchase from Niger, which right. ended up being totally false. I believe that was the, uh, the, the yellow cake coming out of Niger that okay. supposedly Saddam Hussein purchased, which was never, was found not to be true. There were no weapons of mass destruction, so I would ask Colin Powell, where are the weapons, weapons of mass destruction, you know? If you got to ask, let's say, Colin Powell a question, what would you ask him? I'd ask him if... Uh, if he was against the Bush administration with its war mongering how he feels about Obama. You know, if I had a chance to ask Colin Powell a question, I'd probably ask him, what's it like being in the Oval Office? I think to be able to just have that sense of presence and, and being in a place that's so powerful but yet historic, it's just, it's, it's astronomical. I think we all make mistakes and uh, certainly if we don't forgive others for those mistakes, we can't expect to be forgiven ourselves for those. It's a pretty big mistake, you know, going to war. I mean, you know, that's, that's a pretty big one. That's you know, true. Some people don't think it was a mistake. It might have even been intentional that, he, you know, he brought in props and he actually lied to Congress and to the U.N. for us to go to war. Um, I can't really speak on his own, uh, you know, motives for doing that if he, if he did indeed do that. Um, I don't know if it's proven that he did lie. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh. But I, I can say that he was a very... He's a motivational man. He's a good leader, and oh. I think we can learn a lot from him. Oh, good. So he actually addressed the crowd. Were they pretty responsive? And he talked about TSA pat-downs, and did he ex talk about expanding the TSA to include bus terminals, subway stations, or was it just airports? No, he was just basically talking about the general experience in the airport, um, and he made it humorous, okay. um, which kind of disarms people and, sure. and, and makes it less threatening. I quit flying because of it. I, I won't. Yeah, pal's there to sell you slavery anymore. Some people think that McChrystal was responsible for exploiting Pat Tillman's murder. Do you buy into that, or what are your thoughts? What, if you could ask McChrystal a question, what would it be? I would ask him what his role was in Pat Tillman's uh, cover-up, the, the death of the Pat Tillman cover-up. That's what I would ask him. McChrystal, I'd ask him if he knew anything about Matt uh, about Tillman. You know, before before he got killed. You know, what information passed by his desk. Now, this billboard was tagged on Thanksgiving, but the graffiti still remains, which means during the past few days, the people of Austin, Texas, have been subjected to a glimpse of the unvarnished truth. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. And again, talking to Darren and others, um, that looks like poster board that's up there. That's why you can see it hanging off of there, blown off by the wind. So that's, I guess, a good way to uh, tag things, not that we're endorsing it. That way it doesn't even damage it. Though it looked like there was some red ink in the eyeballs or red paint or something. <laughs> Had the blood on their hands, yeah. Oh, Giuliani has some blood dripping out of his mouth. What a ghoulish creature. I've actually been at the RNC uh, 2004 covering it when he slinked by. and He looks like kind of like a mentally ill goblin uh, vampire or something like that. All right, we'll go ahead and go to break and uh, come back. But if the globalists think the American people are all brain dead and going to go along with this, you got another thing coming. We know who you are, crooks, and we're going to expose you. Freedom has a posse. We'll be right back. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there, InfoWars.com. It's InfoWars Nightly News, and we're now into the interview section of this transmission. Remember, this news is completely independent of the establishment of banker bailout money. MSNBC, of course, is financed by your tax dollars. We are teleprompter free. This is my research, my guest research, my views, my commentary, my analysis, my crew's research and commentary and analysis. And we are teleprompter free, and we've just got a few days left of the free 15-day trial at PrisonPlanet.tv or InfoWarsNews.com. We're also running a special through Christmas where you can get 44% off a year membership. You buy six point whatever months, and you get 5.3 months. 
That's what it actually comes out to. So 44% off our yearly membership and your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships pays uh, to finance so much of InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, the syndicated radio show, the documentary films, this infrastructure we've built. We reach tens of millions of people a week and we couldn't have done it without your support. And then of course, uh, within 24, 48 hours, it varies. This information is then disseminated off of PrisonPlanet.tv and millions and millions of people watch it every week on YouTube and thousands of other channels that are out there. So again, thank you for being subscribers. If you're watching this uh, down the road, uh, and you're not a subscriber, think about visiting PrisonPlanet.tv. We just keep adding stuff. It'll be nine years this coming April we've had PrisonPlanet.tv. We're fighting for liberty via the InfoWar, and so we have InfoWars.com, but then we have PrisonPlanet.tv and PrisonPlanet.com so that we don't become a prison planet. Now, earlier I got into the fact that Senator Lindsey Graham and others have come out that actually sponsored the bill in the Senate uh, the new uh, National Defense Authorization for 2012. And they, they said, yeah, it affects Americans. And we will arrest you without warrants and, you know, we'll, we'll execute you if we want. I mean, they say they kill citizens if they want. And hell, Congress has told you, the Senate's told you, we'll insider trade, we'll give contracts to companies we're invested in. It's illegal for you to do it, but we're crooks in your face. So take that. I mean, this is just a lawless group of scum up there, except for a few people like Ron Paul, Rand Paul. And of course, there's another uh, congressman who's now uh, come out and gone public, uh, Mr. Amash, and he has come out and uh, stated the fact. He told the Grand Rapids Press, he's a Republican uh, congressman, he said that uh, the language of the bill is carefully crafted to mislead the public. And first they tried to say it doesn't affect citizens, trust us, we love you. And once the public found out, they said, okay, suckers, it does. Drones are going to be in the sky. All your tax money is used against you. Just like a third world country, the number one danger to the people is the military in the hands of corrupt individuals. It was the same with Hitler. It was the same with Caesar 2,000 years ago and change. It's the same system over and over again. And this is the continued crossing of that Rubicon. Now, the reason I raise all of that is this stuff finally gets attention. People are finally listening because it's manifesting. And they've always wanted to use the military on the streets of America. They've always wanted to make it kosher and acceptable so we can live in an occupied nation. The banksters take over the, fe the federal government, they then take over the rest of the states. And that's what the 10 regions of FEMA are about and the 10 governors now that are above the states and the rural affairs with the Pentagon and Homeland Security above it, the rural council. This is super creepy, right out of systems that the Pentagon developed for countries they occupy. Very similar to Soviet occupation programs. Uh, you can see a fiction movie like Red Dawn and see how the Soviets take over the uh, northwestern town you know, in a fictitious uh, scenario. I mean, this is so creepy, though, that even as it actually happens, a lot of people have trouble dealing with the reality of it. But it is happening. And now folks are finally listening to us, and that's good. Now, you need to understand that uh, the big issue here is they've already got military on the streets. They're already running checkpoints all over the country. They're now starting to announce what's been done covertly just to beta test the public. And they already, in the last 40 years, turned many of the police into paramilitary. They're just not wearing camo. They're wearing black uniforms and battle gear. So they've already gotten rid of posse comitatus in many f levels. But, but now they're just officially saying, not only are we going to have military on the street, we'll arrest you and throw you in a dungeon, and you're never seen again without a trial. And we'll kill you if we want to, and we'll torture you. Because that's what the good guys do. You understand? We're in a lot of trouble here. Now, you know, in the last three years, we were sent MIAC, Homeland Security Reports, and other documents. It became a big national story, and other people began to go digging around for federal training manuals that are out there. And we were sent this by state police in one case, federal marshal in another. And I've been sent just incredible internal training manuals that we've published here. And a lot of times it does make national news. Now, I don't expect this to make national news because they don't want people to see this information. A few years ago, they didn't mind if folks learned, hey, the number one terror threats for turning veterans, gun owners, libertarians, conservatives, people like that. But they don't want you to know that if you're investigating government-sponsored terror, 9-11, Oklahoma City, you name it, you are called a domestic terrorist. Again, if you're exposing the history of government staging events, which is on record, not just ours but others, it's an old trick, that's terrorism. And uh, 
this is publicly given out in these manuals now at public events that Homeland Security has where, where, where counties and cities with your tax money send police to be brainwashed. And this latest one is State and Local Anti-Terrorism Training Reference Manual. And uh, we'll put a shot of that uh, up on screen here. And uh, the uh, folks that are basically uh, listed in there are people that are investigating the Oklahoma City conspiracy, not believing any official story. If the government told you the moon was made of cheese and you questioned it, that's a conspiracy theory. If you question known liars, that's conspiracy theory. Uh, and of course, I've been exposing Oklahoma City for 16 years. Many others have been exposing it. And the Red Dirt Report, uh, headed up by its founder, Andrew W. Griffin, is doing a lot of original investigative reporting, amazing footwork. It, it's going into a new film coming out in a few months, uh, The Noble Lie, uh, getting into Oklahoma City with a lot of new information. And the headline is Fusion Center Documents Label OKC Bombing Investigators as Terrorist. And it's OKCBombing.net, and that's State Rep. Charles Key, a representative. Look, if you're a representative and you've got the grand juror who found out it was a government operation, Hoppy Heidelberg, and the former head of Air Force Weapons Development about how bombs were in the building, and you have newscasts of them removing the bombs that didn't blow up, you don't see that or you're a terrorist. Of course, only the terrorists would say that, and we know the Attorney General... Uh, Holder was the deputy attorney general at the time, and his emails got released in lawsuits where he said day one, we got to get down there, we got to cover up what really happened. This is a D-Day situation, was the quote. Then we had the head of anti-terrorism lying and saying he wasn't in Oklahoma City. Then it turned out he was, and we have the hotel receipts. And, of course, we have Jane Graham up on the ninth floor of the Oklahoma City building who witnessed McVeigh and other feds and people planting the bombs, and she thought they were telephone men the day before it all happened. So this is uh, the, the, the criminals we have that will bomb our government, so the government then will attack the American people. It's very simple. The foreign banks have taken over. They're now fully imploding the planet to bring in their new world order, and they're going to need to stage some terror attacks. Remember all the memos we've covered in the last year where they were top advisors to Obama? It's been the Financial Times of London, you name it, say, you need a new Oklahoma City, sir, publicly. That will save you. You can de demonize your, your detractors and pose as a savior. And now... When that guy shot the White House who was schizophrenic and thought he was Jesus, they blame me for the Obama deception, which is about Obama being a puppet and it calls for peaceful awakening. Now, joining us uh, to break this down, I guess, is according to our occupied, it is, it's occupied, I mean, publicly the Pentagon saying, you know, we're taking over. TSA is going to grope your daughters and sons on the highway is Andrew Griffin of Red Dirt Report, and he uh, joins us. Uh, really, uh, well, from Oklahoma at the epicenter of this. They don't want you looking into what really happened in Oklahoma. You're supposed to believe the fairy tale. Uh, good to have you uh, here with us. Great to be with you, Alex. So, Andrew, uh, it says that the uh, website for the Oklahoma City Bombing Investigation Committee, a group convinced that a large Oklahoma City bomb conspiracy exists. Members of the legislature in your, in that, in your state are terrorists according to the feds who actually staged the attack. Um, of course, I mean, it's just a proven, documented uh, situation. Uh, what do you think of this? Frankly, I couldn't believe it when I read it. When I received this document uh, through some sources uh, that contacted reddirtreport.com uh, last week, I uh, looked into this, and sure enough, uh, it's an official document from the Bureau of uh, Justice Assistance, which is a component of the Department of Justice. It, they basically work with local, state, and federal agencies to uh, coordinate uh, anti-violence uh, training. So uh, this document was uh, found at a fusion center uh, conference in New Orleans uh, in 2010 uh, by some activists, and that's uh, how I... Uh, became uh learned about this and we uh did the story and and sure enough it's real okcbombing.net is the website for the oklahoma bomb uh bombing investigation committee which hasn't been around since about 2001 when the final report that they released uh came out just right before 9 11 in fact yeah i remember interviewing them at the time so so how dare uh, the group made up of the former grand jury head and uh, members of the legislature and, and survivors, they're, they're terrorists because they survived it or lost family members. And they were there and saw the bombs removed and the newscast and the footage of it and the pillars blown out and the witnesses of ATF being involved. They're terrorists. I mean, 
uh, wow, uh, I mean, they're certainly scared in the federal government of people looking into this. No, the, indeed they are. And, uh, you know, I, I really started digging into this uh, years ago, uh, right right around the late 1990s. I read a great book called Oklahoma City Bombing and the Politics of Terror by David Hoffman. And I really learned about that other side of the coin and related to the Oklahoma City bombing. I wasn't even living in Oklahoma at the time. But uh, once I learned more about what was really going on, about the Elohim City connection with uh, Andy the German Strassmeyer, uh, about the uh, connections into Kansas and the Michigan, the militia movement and so forth. Uh, my senses started just kind of reeling because I was like, well, this is not just some, uh, some lone Oswald type. This is clearly a, a vast conspiracy. And that took me down the path to uh, interviewing Jane Graham, one of the survivors you mentioned, uh, VZ Lawton, and uh, plenty of others here in Oklahoma City. And uh, in the past uh, five or six years that I've been living here, I I've uncovered a lot. And, uh, but there's still a cloud of denial, even with the local officials, with uh, residents here in the Oklahoma City area about uh, what really happened on April 19th, 1995. Yeah, just like there's denial about the fact that the Pentagon wants to be able to arrest citizens and kill you or throw you in a dungeon forever. I mean, now it's just all public. Uh, I mean, it's incredible that we have these, these mega banks who publicly have hijacked the country. They've hijacked Europe. They're getting rid of our Bill of Rights and Constitution. They're getting rid of liberty and freedom. And they're using terror to cram this down our throats. Uh, in fact, let's show the uh, terrorists. It's under domestic terrorism. So it's domestic terrorism to, to, to be victims and to be members of the legislature in Oklahoma. Uh, and to investigate this, let's go ahead and put the terrorist website uh, on screen for folks uh, for the uh, Oklahoma City um, investigation group uh, with uh, State Rep Charles Key, who I do intend to get back on the show. Just absolutely horrible and evil that uh, victims of this attack would uh, would uh, dare to uh, to in, uh, investigate. It's so un-American to, to ask questions. You know, Bill Clinton, uh, uh, right after his election on Air Force One, told U.S. Today and other reporters he owed his re-election to the Oklahoma City bombing. He was way down in the polls, about 41 percent, and it went up to the 70s right after the attack. He got to grandstand for everybody. Uh, and we know about Gulf of Tonkin and all the rest of it. Uh, for you, though, researching it, for new viewers out there, why is Oklahoma City important now? And what are some of the smoking guns in your deep research? Well, you mentioned this uh, uh, the, uh, NDAA bill that uh, is going to be possibly passing in the Senate and become law and make investigators such as myself or independent-minded people who, who find there to be real problems with the uh, federal government's version of what happened here in Oklahoma City as terrorists. And and that that's really what's shocking about this. I think... Uh, well, as more people uh, come to find out more information, and, and I will say, I, I will make a plug for A Noble Lie, this film that's coming out here with Free Mind Films. Uh, they've done an outstanding job uncovering new information, uh, w eyewitness uh, testimony that's been previously uh, unreported about uh, what happened, what they saw going on in the building uh, below uh, with the columns and in, in the days in advance of, of when the bomb uh, took place. So, you know, the, the evidence is all around, and it's just a matter of being able to open your eyes and, and come to see that there was a, a vast conspiracy that the federal government did know uh, in advance that that bombing was about to take place, as much as they will deny and obfuscate uh, that fact. So, uh, you know, I expect, uh, you know, as this gets more and more uh, interest among the public, especially here in Oklahoma, because I'm, I'm starting to see uh, it's we're seeing some cracks in the foundation of, of denial here. And people are starting to, to think, you know, with bills such as the NDAA bill and, you know, with uh, the TSA and, and all the, the, you know, the tyranny that we're having to put up with, people are starting to say, you know, this is not the America I thought I, I lived in growing up. And uh, so with the Oklahoma City bomb, and I think people look back at that time as a time of a fairly peaceful time in our history in, in the United States. And, uh, you know, we weren't at, at war necessarily. And this happens, and it just sort of took away your innocence, of course, with the impact of, of 19 children dying, 168 people in total uh, in the heartland. That was the, you know, 
that's really what really kind of uh, seared the heart for a lot of people was that this was, you know, not on the coast in a b bigger city. This was in Oklahoma City. I mean, well, it was done places. because Waco happened uh, in, in central Texas, and that made the government look bad, slaughtering all those people. And the truth had come out. And there was a big states' rights movement happening centering around Oklahoma City and your legislature. And so it's, it's very simple. I mean, if you go through all of it, and Elohim City and the Southern Poverty Law Center and all of it, I mean, how they... Uh, orchestrated the entire operation. It, it, it's 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 really nightmarish uh, to to realize how dangerous these people are, and to realize one of the chief architects of the cover up of it is now the attorney general, and it it ties into Fast and Furious where they're caught shipping tens of thousands of guns into Mexico, not just letting them be sold out of shops and shipping them to people in Illinois, Indiana, Tampa, Florida. Uh, and then allowing drugs to be shipped back in. You know, that's in the Chicago Tribune, that's in the El Paso Times, but a very, but never be, became a big national story that the government's also shipping tons of cocaine in. I mean, this is just a criminal enterprise. I talked earlier about Congress saying, hey, we're allowed to insider trade now. I mean, I mean, it's just they're really flaunting it in our face. I would, I would say they're, they're pimping us. They're, they're breaking our will. They're putting cigarettes out on us right now and saying, you know what? You know, we are criminals. And, and you know what? Investigating our operations, you're the terrorist. You're going to say the government's terrorist or elements of it? You're the terrorist. And it's so incredibly transparent. I mean, you know, they've listed Infowars.com before and gone after me and other documents, but this one lists anti war, which is a milk toast libertarian site, as usual, uh, the, an unusual site, essentially an isolationist right wing libertarian site. Uh, and it goes on to design to appeal to anti-war activists from the left as well. And it says, Journal of the Moorish Paradigm, ending corporate governance. I mean, these are evil Americans involved in their First Amendment. These are, and you know, people can joke about this, say, oh, they don't really think you're terrorist. Pre-9-11, I have footage in my film, Road to Tyranny, that everybody's got to go watch. It's free online. The DVD is available at Infowars.com, where it's squad car video of at a checkpoint, and they jerk this woman out of the car and are searching it. And they find a pocket constitution, and they begin hyperventilating in fear as if they had found the baby Satan. I mean, I mean, as if they'd opened the, it was a dimensional portal into Hades. And, and it's like they've sworn an oath to it, but they thought it was a demonic entity. I mean, they were, oh, can't believe we found it. Is it legal? And they have a debate about, is a constitution legal? And, and, and I, I mean, it's like these people are Manchurian candidates or something. Right. Well, you know, Alex, uh, a story that I've been uh, kind of following is, and I've written a little bit about, and, and you featured it on InfoWars, was uh, how Louis Free, the former FBI director under Clinton, is uh, reappearing everywhere. Uh, if, if you haven't noticed this, uh, he's going to be investigating the Penn State pedophile scandal. He's going to be investigating MF Global. Uh, you, you know, you see these characters from... He'll you know, fix everything! <laughs> well, it's interesting that John Corzine and Louis Free are from practically the same neighborhood. So, uh, you, you know, and they're from the same uh, fraternity and so forth. So you kind of wonder, is this really going to be investigated or not? You know, and then, of course, you have the Penn State issue. Um, oh, I'm and, sure he'll uh, investigate. Hmm. <laughs> so I've been I've been looking at a lot of connections related to uh, Free and, and some of these uh, new uh, uh, controversial stories that have been uh, coming up lately. And, and now uh, there's Syracuse and the ESPN cover-up of that. I mean, this is just how they roll. It's a crew of, well, sickos. Uh, but expanding on that, what's your view on the whole Fast and Furious? I mean, right there's an example of them shipping guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment, but also let the drug cartels knock out their competition and ship that lovely white stuff up into ATF, FBI, DEA, Border Patrol, uh, and, and several other agencies uh, that were involved. I mean, uh, these are confirmed criminals. Right. And I was, uh, in fact, uh, this uh, Thanksgiving weekend, I spent time with family in southern Arizona. And uh, the Border Patrol's everywhere. And I'm thinking, you know, they were, you know, asking us, you know, looking at me, like, are you an American citizen? And, and you know, sniffing how the drug dogs are sniffing. And I, I'm a criminal, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah they're not. But, but the illegal aliens, I've talked to them, that they're allowed to go. Right. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I'm, you know, I'm probably about 80 miles from the Mexican border in around Tombstone, Arizona. And I'm thinking, you know, this is happening well within the in the, in the uh, confines of American territory. Why are they harassing us? And, you know, and then I think about the guns, you know, being shipped down into Sonora and, and these other uh, narco states within Mexico. And, 
you know, it, it's just they turn a blind eye to it, like so many things. I mean, this is sort isn't this poppy harvest season in Afghanistan right now in November. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure we'll, you know, see a rise in, in heroin, you know, on the streets. Oh, well, it was like less than 10 percent of world supply coming out of Afghanistan. But after the liberation, 93 percent. And now they just admit the troops grow it and they ship it to America. But if you use it, you go to jail. That's absolutely right. And it's it's that way with so many of these uh, things that they make illegal. And uh, it's, you know, prohibition didn't work, uh, you know, 70, 80 years well, ago. Well, it works and, to jack up prices. Well, that's true. And to corrupt the police so they're in the hip pocket. It works quite well. They've destroyed America quite nicely. And now, if you don't like it, you'll just go to a military brig. <laughs> well, that's right. So uh, You don't you like know. MF Global taking your bank account? Hey, you paid for the Army. Here it is. And you're, you're not patriotic if you don't like when they... Have you heard police are now in the news, I'm not joking, saying that it's resisting if when they're kicking you, you ball up. So when the military says, oh, we're going to knock your teeth out, you got to go, uh, right here, thank you. Uh, how's that sound? That, that just sounds so American. Well, it is American. And if you don't like it, torture, secret arrest, cowardice, public absolutely under surveillance. 1984 was an instruction manual for freedom. You didn't know George Washington wrote 1984? There's an idea of freedom. Right. Winston was a terrorist, and so were you, buddy. Would you like to apologize for investigating Oklahoma City and interviewing, I know in the new film coming out, Terrence Yankee's wife and you know, the government killing the cop. But see, that, that's patriotic now to kill cops that are exposing the government. And that clearly happened. I mean, I don't understand how the uh, chief of police of Oklahoma City could uh, turn a blind eye to one of his own being uh, brutally murdered as Terrence Yakey was uh, in 1996. Uh, that it's just it's a grievous insult to to his memory that uh, it's been covered up so in such a way. So, you know, that is pointed out in in the new film that's coming out, A Noble Lie. And, you know, we're not going to let this die. We're going to keep going at this. We're going to keep exposing this as, as more information comes our way at Red Dirt Report with Free Mind Films, with independent journalists who are, you know, I guess have enough courage to, to report this because the local mainstream media here in Oklahoma will not touch this topic unless it's, you know, some hand-holding event down at the bombing memorial. Well, look, they wouldn't be putting people that investigate Oklahoma City in a list of terrorists if it didn't scare them. The terrorists know we're on to them. And some people in the government are not part of the terrorism. That's why they send us these documents. That's why this stuff gets leaked. Uh, I wonder if we should try to get in contact with our loving federal owners and ask them, you know, what else is terrorism? I guess having a IQ above room temperature may be terrorism. Well, I tried contacting the Bureau of Justice Assistance, uh, one of these uh, acronyms that means nothing, and uh, I didn't get a response. But I was curious, how do you end up on one of these uh, in, among this list? Now, I suspect that this is something they probably dredged up from the Southern Poverty Law oh, Center. Oh, no, no, it's 100 percent ADL Southern Poverty Law Center written. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah so. Uh, but, you know, I'd like to find out what their criteria are to end up on a list like this. You know, Red Dirt Report, is that going to be on there? Is, is uh, you know, I saw antiwar.com, as you mentioned earlier, and I was like, w are they kidding me? It, I, I just, I don't understand. It's well, like no, no, they want to make it ridiculous. And see, it, it's a psychological warfare precept. When they show cops the Constitution and anti terror training and say, this is evil, George Washington is bad. For folks that haven't seen Road to Tyranny, we have, we have footage of FEMA training in Kansas City showing it. I mean, you, you watch it, you think it's absurd, it's a joke, it's real. And they tell the cops, the Constitution is bad, George Washington is bad, Thomas Jefferson is bad, and the, and the cops are like, yes, yes. By it being so crazy, when the cops decide to go ahead and agree it's bad, they have to mentally commit to it and then get excited about it. Because it's so crazy in the peer pressure, because you see the cops going, George Washington's bad, and, they, and under peer pressure they go, he's bad, he's bad. And they're like, yeah, he's bad. And they're like, you're good now, you're bad. George Washington, he's bad. And I mean, this is a sicko cult. You've got to realize how sick these people are. These are terrorists. And they're all over the place now. I mean, uh, in the airports, uh, I, you feel like you're in uh, you know, East Germany or something in 1980. It's East Germany didn't grab children's genitals. They didn't point. put you in microwave ovens. It's beyond it. But see, we, it's America, so see, it couldn't be true here. And that's the thing. I saw this article talking about how different uh, versions of Newsweek or Time magazine have uh, more explicit covers uh, overseas, and then they'll have some milk toast uh, cover here 
uh, in the U.S. version of the magazine. It's just to kind of, you know, keep them entertained, keep them, you know, obsessed with you know, sporting events and, uh, and uh, you know, feed them the aspartame and the, and the fluoride and so forth, and, the, and they'll be happy. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting how you really have to go to a lot of, if you're reading mainstream news articles, a lot of them are from uh, Europe. I mean, uh, the state of journalism in the United States is just so abysmal. And I, I, I'm a, you know, journalism grad. I, I went to newspapers thinking, you know, we were going to, you know, really expose a lot of stuff. And my editors would never let me really do the big stories. And that's why I went out on my own and started. No, they're like, why don't you do a story on what people's favorite color is or, or how great it is to have troops on the street corner for the homeland? Well, when I was a, a reporter starting out in Waxahachie, Texas years ago, I tried to expose some stuff related to these black helicopters that were, were flying real low in this neighborhood and uh, dropping some sort of powder on people. And uh, my editor wouldn't let me do a story on that. He's, oh, oh, yeah, that happens crazy. here. They even got footage of it. It ended up being in the and then they're like, there's a secret program. We're dropping powder, but don't worry about it. Exactly. We're dropping powder on you. And literally, you can have footage of the helicopter. And they're like, it doesn't exist. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. I had eyewitness reports from this, and my editor would not let me uh, do the story. Well, and, see, uh, for decades they said there is no world government, there's no international bankers. We're like, they will implode the world system through derivatives. Here's the Trilateral Commission document. Now it's actually happening, and they're like, yes, global government by the bankers, but still you're a terrorist if you think bankers are taking over. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's now reached absurdist proportions. No, and, and you know, I was talking to somebody, a fellow investigator, and there, I don't know about you, Alex, but there's a real sense of urgency right now that I, I'm just on a deeper level that there's so many these important stories and this stuff needs to get out quickly. And I, I mean, personally, I am just cranking out stories left and right. Oh, yeah, no, uh, no, no. They're getting rid of the Bill of Rights Constitution under a new border deal. They're creating North American Union, legalizing total Monsanto takeover. Europe just did it, uh, overthrowing their courts. They said administratively the EU is doing this. Tyranny is here. The bankers are making their move. And, I mean, hell, they're on the news saying Americans will be arrested permanently and detained. We will kill you if we wish. Drones are in command. We're saving you from Al-Qaeda. And we're like, but Al-Qaeda was just given control of Libya, and now they've sent them to Syria. Shut up, terrorist. And we're fighting Al-Qaeda together. We'll take your private bank account. Don't complain. MF Global loves you. Corzine advises the White House. Freedom continues. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the drones. I've been writing about drones as well, and and I've actually witnessed one of these here uh, one night in Oklahoma City about two or three years ago. I was with a friend on, on my porch and saw a drone hovering over our neighborhood and then and then zip away. Now, there's an Air Force base not far from here, and it could have come from there. But these drones, I mean, they're already out there. They're not coming. They're already out there. And remember, you pay to have your military that's been taken over by foreign banks do this to you. And now they've announced they're going to weaponize the drones. Now they're going to deal with those evil Americans. Well, that's right. And, and in fact, there was a Mexican film that came out a couple of years ago called Sleep Dealer, where uh, the, sh the TV show that the characters are watching is called Drones. I don't know if you saw this film, but uh, basically these drones, it's like a reality show where drone pilots are going around uh, bombing like villagers in, in rural Mexico because they get too close to a water supply, like a, a dam or a, a reservoir. And it, 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 it smacked to something kind of realistic the way it was portrayed in the film. And it was interesting that it was a Mexican film, not an American film. So. Oh, no, exactly. They are actually beta testing. I watched the new Transformers movie, Dark Side of the Moon, and, and they're horrible on purpose. I like that movie, Battle of Los Angeles. It, it's like the little kid goes, I want to grow up to be a Marine. It's a giant advertisement. And, and now they're moving on to, like, the space aliens, because you can't kill the Indians, you can't kill the whatever. That's not politically correct. It's always space aliens. But in this, it's all just government surveillance brainwashing. And you've got to remember, large swaths of the public are fed on this now. All right, man, it, it's been great having you. Uh, any closing points you wanted to make? Just that, you know, we're going to continue uh, covering a lot of these issues uh, related to the Oklahoma City bombing and the uh, cover-up at reddirtreport.com. And uh, we certainly appreciate you uh, having us on here today, Alex. So you're going to continue to engage in thought, crime, and terrorism? Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, it's, it's terrible. Ladies, I appreciate you joining us, but I've got to say to people, I apologize for having that terrorist on. Whoa, <laughs> I'm calling and reporting him immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa, whoa. I mean, I was so glad when a firefighter sent me that footage of good FEMA people 
teaching uh, police and firefighters that the founding fathers are terrorists. Uh, it was scary hearing about those founding father people. I mean, in America, they, these are bad people. Uh, it's totally normal to have FEMA teaching police that. And then I saw the squad car footage I talked about in Road to Tyranny where they, they freaked out over a pocket constitution. Of course they should. But this is even worse. These people are investigating all the eyewitnesses and the footage and the bombs and making films and interviewing the victims. Those victims are terrorists. I mean, these are bad people. Thank God for Corzine taking billions of uh, dollars out of people's private accounts. Thank God the government's taken the military's death benefits and stolen it. I mean, that's freedom. Okay, I'm going to end the transmission tonight. Thank God they're trying to get rid of Posse Comitatus and get rid of Magna Carta and, and secretly arrest and throw the key away and kill you if they want. America is about the government killing you if they want and having no rights. And I want to say, I don't want to be on the terror list. I think I'm going to join the system. I think I'm going to hunt people down like this guy. In fact, he's still there laughing. Put the camera on him. He thinks it's funny. These are sick people. I apologize for InfoWars Nightly News. Remember, our dear leaders are fighting to make America as good or even better than North Korea. They want to bring you the freedom of total slavery. Uh, the crew here is a bunch of sickos as well. I just had an epiphany, a, a, a awakening, a realization that this, that, the, that George Washington was bad. I agree with FEMA. And by the way, the good thing is it's not just Obama who cares about us. It was Bush and Clinton and on before them, George Bush Sr. And Newt Gingrich calls for world government. I mean, they have all known the truth. They've all wanted to get rid of the family and freedom and private property. And they've, they've overthrown George Washington. I just think it's great. In fact, that's it for me. I'm done. I think I'm going to... I'm going to go try to join the ATF so we can knock down some old people's doors. They like to find old people that haven't registered a gun right or something in Illinois, and they like to pistol whip. And I'm a good guy. All right, I'm done. I'm going to go report this terror. See you later, folks. All right, keep, keep laughing, pal. Keep laughing. Homeland's going to get you. They're on the winning team.